Today, I'm joined with author Robert J. Sawyer to talk about his newest novel, The Omenhire Alternative. Thank you so much, Robert, for joining us here today. An absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me, Nicole. Can you tell us a little bit more about your newest novel? Yes, it's called The Oppenheimer Alternative, and the Oppenheimer in question is J. Robert Oppenheimer, who's often called the father of the atomic bomb. He was the scientific director of the Manhattan Project, which began 80 years ago this year in a race against time to try to develop, they thought, the atomic bomb before the Germans developed it. Well, the Germans were nowhere near developing it, and Hitler put an end to World War II in Europe before the Americans finished their bomb anyways by killing himself in April of 1945. But the bomb was ready by the summer of 1945 and was used on two cities in Japan, as we all well know, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, my novel is an alternate history or a secret history of the Manhattan Project. Everything that happens in the book, the Oppenheimer Alternative, is uh, not contradicted by anything that's in the historical record. But there are a lot of gaps in that historical record. Oppenheimer himself famously said, if a reporter were to dig deep enough, they would find that there's a story beyond. He was, uh, Oppenheimer was put on trial um, for whether or not he was a, a communist sympathizer and ultimately lost his security clearance. But he'd said at the time, he really said, if a reporter digs deep enough, they'll find there's a much bigger story than just my security clearance. Well, nobody had ever told that story in the 80 years since the uh, Manhattan Project began. I wanted to tell it for my 24th novel, The Oppenheimer Alternative. That's the tale that I tell. So you're normally known for writing more futuristic books. So what inspired you to go back in time for this one? So one of my colleagues, I'm a science fiction writer, as you've alluded to, one of my colleagues Kim Stanley Robinson, excellent science fiction writer and a friend of mine, said uh, to me many years ago, I did what you're doing now. I interviewed him, but for CBC Radio back in 1990. And he said, you know, science fiction is just history continued, that you have to have an appreciation for the past if you're going to write about the future, plausibly extrapolate forward. And that had always stuck in my mind. Now that's that's getting on to, you know, 32 years ago, but that had stuck in my mind. And I'd always had this desire. To, I'd written science fiction in the far future. I'd written science fiction in the near future. My novel prior to the Oppenheimer alternative called Quantum Night, set mostly in Winnipeg and Saskatoon, was set in the present day. Stan Robinson's comment had stuck in my mind. I wondered, could you write a science fiction novel set in the past and still have scientific extrapolation and big ideas and sense of wonder and all of that philosophy? And that was my experiment with the Oppenheimer alternative to see if you could do that. Science fiction, but historically set. So the novel starts in uh, the late 1930s with Oppenheimer as a young man and ends in 1967 when Oppenheimer passed away. He was a brilliant man, but also an idiot. He was an idiot in the sense that he smoked himself to death. He survived nuclear experimentation. He survived uh, World War II. He survived, you know, uh, being branded a communist, but he smoked himself to death. And that's uh, where the novel ends, but not, not, not with that, but with a more dramatic ending than that. So this book is filled with all real characters. How much research was required in order to do that? Yeah, there have been people who've written novels putatively about the Manhattan Project before. And there was even a TV series uh, briefly called Manhattan. And they took the easy way out. One of the novels that I read that a, a friend of mine wrote um, took a minor character who happened to be the, the, the writer's father-in-law, who, yes, had been involved in in research in the Manhattan Project, but nobody had ever heard of him. And that's kind of a get out of jail free card. And on the TV series, they used all sorts of fictional characters that they just made up. Um, and again, a get out of jail free card for a writer, you can do anything. And I thought, no, 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 no. These people not only were real, but they were fascinating. The characters in my novel are just J. Robert Oppenheimer. Edward Teller, who's often considered the 
template, he's the father of the much bigger hydrogen bomb, often considered the template for the character of Dr. Strangelove in the classic Stanley Kubrick film. Uh, Albert Einstein is in my novel. You know, the, the, these are incredibly famous people. Uh, if you know physics at all, you'll know the names of Enrico Fermi, and you'll know Hans Bethe and I.I. Uh, I. Rabi and people like that. They're all in there. Now, they're all dead. Oppenheimer's son is still alive. Uh, many of these people, uh, uh, my friend who wrote the other novel, The Berlin Project that I alluded to by Gregory Benford, he was Edward Teller's graduate student. I mean, he knew Teller, right? Uh, so there are people alive who remembered these people. I felt an obligation, a moral and artistic obligation to get these characters right so that people who knew them or their living relatives would say, okay, you know, to quote uh, Khrushchev when he was photographed by the Ottawa photographer Karsh, warts and all, to get the real people. To answer your question directly, Nicole, it took me two years of full-time research to prepare to write this book. Well, thank you again for joining us here today, Robert. Oh, Nicole, what a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Cheers.